We went on stage at the, the or we had our stadium groundbreaking the other day, and we went on stage oh, to yeah. like thank our owners, and there was a band on stage. So while I was talking, he just like put a cowboy hat on my head, and I was like, <laughs> "Okay, why don't you just turn me into the laughing stock of the community?" But fine, <laughs> I'm used to it. That's so funny. <laughs> As you already know, we're huge podheads here, and we're excited to share that our friends over at Flamebearers just launched a new season of their game-changing podcast. Listen to weekly episodes where top women Olympians and Paralympians reflect on their accomplishments, share their trials and triumphs, and discuss what life is like outside the game when the spotlight isn't on. Check it all out on season three of Flamebearers. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Lynn Williams. And I'm Sam Mewis, and this is Snacks, where we talk about some personal stuff, some soccer stuff, some real stuff, and some fun stuff. So, Lynn, what's new? Well, a couple of things are new. Um, one, I wanted to talk about tomato soup. because. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, I made tomato. First of all, my question to you is, how much tomato soup is too much tomato soup, do you think? Why? Because you made it last night, and then we had it for lunch today, and then you probably have leftovers? Exactly. I don't know. Knowing you, like, probably two bowls is too much. Because, like, some, something <laughs> will upset your stomach. That is true. I have a sensitive stomach. I don't know how I became like this. I feel like as a child, I was, like, a stomach of steel. I don't know what to tell you, Lynn. I honestly think you just got to... Push on. So Push on. I, so anyways, I'm going to be eating a lot of tomato soup because I had it last night. I had it this afternoon. I'm going to have it tonight. I'll probably have it tomorrow. I thought we were going to go get tacos tonight. Oh, yeah. I'll have it tomorrow. Two times tomorrow. Lynn just tried to publicly cancel plans with me. And that was I, an accident. And I, and I didn't let her. <laughs> that was it. I could have a pre-taco tomato soup. Sure. You sure can. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to mention anyway. is you wouldn't know this because you don't have curly hair. And I'm assuming when you get up in the morning, you don't spray your hair because, mm -mm. but I do. I have to spray my hair in the morning or I will look literally crazy. And normally I have a spray bottle that I have to go every time. And sometimes my hand hurts because mm. I have to go so much. So I got this spray bottle on Amazon and it's changed my life. Basically I spray it once and it's like a continuous Ooh. sprayer so I can just hold it down. That's amazing. I know. What Do you wanna shout it out? I don't know the brand. Oh. Just the one that's continuous spraying mist. Well that's a beautiful little tidbit and I'm so glad that you shared that. Thank you. Um, so those are my two random things that I have going on. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the haunted house that we went to. You mean the sweat house? You mean the sweat lodge? <laughs> the sweat lodge. The sauna. Yeah. We went to the Beast in Kansas City. It's a haunted house. I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was going to be just like the haunted houses I grew up going to. It took us like 45 minutes to get through this thing. 45 and we, minutes. And we were, I personally will include a picture, said picture here, <laughs> was drenched in sweat. It was really sweaty. I, we have never been closer in our entire lives. The whole no, time we, we were I, going I, through. Sam. <laughs> I'm not like a physical touch with friends person. Like I Me don't either. really like hug or like cuddle my friends or like do anything like that ever. Except for that time I touched Lynn's lip. That was the closest we've ever been. <laughs> I was, like, piggybacking Lynn. I know. I'm the same way. Like, I don't really need that much physical touch either. Like, I don't know why. But I, at one point, had your arms wrapped around me, and I <laughs> covered my ear with your hand and had my hand on top. And I was like, help. Sam, help. I was, like, talking myself up. Like, I love scary things. Like, I'm going to be so brave in there, and I'm going to lead us or be in the back. No. The I middle. was sandwiched right in the middle. Ebo was behind me. Poor Hammy had her back exposed, and poor oh, Lynn no. had to brave the darkness, the frights, the elements, and lead us through, and I just buried myself in Lynn's back. That was the most fun time I've had in a really long time, I feel. I know. 
It was like adrenaline rush. Yeah. If everybody's in the Can- anybody's in the Kansas City area, they should go to the yeah. Beast. Because it was, it was so long. I remember being like, I want this to be over. Same. We kept like, we kept kind of being like, are we done? Can we leave? And then the people would just Continue scare us scare. more. And we'd get you- lost. I, I don't want to give it away, but there is this one part where I had, to, I, I'm going to say it. Say it. This is a trigger, not a trigger warning. This is a... Um, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. In one, two, three. There is a slide part. <laughs> and they made me go down first by myself. And then they wouldn't let the other girls come for a long oh. time. So I was down there with the beast by myself for a second. And then finally, Sam came down. And I was like, come down right now, screaming at her. And then we got chased by this man cornered i wish we had it on video all four of us were cornered in this room and basically they were smushed up against us and we were like stop i can like see it from a bird's eye view like what happened that me lynn hammy and eball were smushed into a corner of like a <laughs> fake scary saloon room and these like fake scary cowboys and axe murderers were smushing us up into the corner like not <laughs> technically really touching us but like their bellies were kind of touching yeah. They were just like rubbing their bellies on us. Convert four or five of them converged us into a corner and just we were just in the corner screaming. It and was then so you funny. guys got out somehow. <clears throat> <Pardon me. laughs> and I like started tripping over stools and kicking stuff over. And I think the people were kind of like, "Can you, <laughs> can you calm down? Like you're like ruining our scene." Well, I kind of like bulldozed over some man because I was like, "Stop! Like stop rubbing your belly on me." <laughs> Ew. It was, it was honestly terrifying. It was a great time. So it's also kind time. of a hazard because you can't see. It's very dark in there you, and there's we, a lot of things. The reason it took us 45 minutes is because three times we were stood still, couldn't see. So we just didn't move for like Poor three, Kristen. four minutes. Poor Kristen had somebody chasing her, like snorting in her ear. And she was be like, go, go, go. And I was like, I can't see. I don't know where to go. I'm going to hit a wall. Have you seen that scary movie? This just reminded me because the snorters. They would, we would just be walking through a dark hallway and somebody against the wall would go, <laughs> and it was like so scary in the moment for some reason. But have you seen that scary movie? I don't know what it's called when the little girl was like this. No. It's Maybe so I have, but scary. I don't know. So I watched it and then I was like in the kitchen alone and I just kept thinking like, can you just imagine if you heard that? Uh, is that, what is your uh, scariest movie like that you've ever watched? I like honestly don't even know. This is not even that scary, I don't think, if I was going to rewatch it. But I remember as a child watching Darkness Falls with my sister and two cousins. And it's about this evil tooth fairy that comes and takes your teeth and then kills you. And so as a small child, I was like, no, I don't want to lose yeah, my teeth. Yeah, that does, that does sound scary. It was terrifying. I, like, I, I don't even really, like, know. I don't watch that many, like, horror movies. Me either. Marley always wants to watch a horror movie. And I'm like, why? Like, can we not? Yeah, like, can we just rewatch like, 27 Dresses or some shit? Yeah, exactly. And he's going to be like, no, absolutely not. I'll be like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Okay, anyways. Okay, yeah, what's up with you? What's we new? were very sweaty. Well, I just wanted to, I know this is coming out um, on Monday, but when we recorded this, our team just won their quarterfinal game. I know. And I was, we were so proud of them. Lynn and I watched together and we had hot apple cider and we cheered on the girls and we friggin' scored in the last minute and it was so you, great. The emotions were up and down. Yes. Up and down. That's it was a and crazy down. game. And then I also just wanted to say that me and Finn yesterday had a little play date with our teammate Izzy's puppy Daisy and it was very cute and they're kind of the same color. They are. It was and cute. And they just romped around and it was really fun. Well, Finn was trying to play with her, and she was just laying down. I know. I think I think she's very calm. Mm-hmm. Finn is very obviously high energy, very doesn't listen active, to the very, very active, very loud, very pumpkiny, just like his mother, just like his mother. And I am bringing a picture of Finn to my hair tomorrow to say, "Can you dye my hair, Finn? The color of Finn." <laughs> Gonna say Do that. you guys think that that is crazy or cute? Let us know. A little of both. Comments. At Tell Sam Snacks. Yes. Tell Sam Snacks hair. Finn. Finn. 
Pumpkin. Halloween. Cute, cra cute, creepy, crazy? Scary. Okay. Scary. We're going to move on. Um, <clears throat> are you, you good? You move on, Lynn. <laughs> you, you move on. Are you good? Um, okay, so what we also need <laughs> to mention that this is our last episode of the season. Hmm. We just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who listened um, and all of our amazing guests that came on. Um, I feel super honored that people like to come on and say that they have an amazing time after they're done being uh, talked at by us and, <laughs> and questioned <laughs> and intently questioned. Um, I agree. Yeah. I think our guests are incredible. I think it's so generous of their time to come mm -hmm. on and humor us. But I will, I know we say this every time, but it's like, we kind of just get to like catch up with our friends. Like I just feel like it's so fun and I hope that our guests enjoy it. And and I love what you said about them sharing personal stories and information with us and our all of our listeners. I know. I feel like even if it is a close friend of ours, I like learn something new about every single guest. I'm like, wow, I had no idea. I know. Um, but anyways, I feel very lucky to do this and have the guests on, have the listeners listen to us, and I feel very lucky to do this with you. So with that being said, um, just keep listening. And, and our listeners, we still think it's so funny that you guys like this podcast. From day one, <laughs> we were shocked. But we love making it. And whenever you come up to us and say, I love snacks, it genuinely makes us so happy. It's our favorite thing to talk to fans about. So we really appreciate it. And we feel like we're friends with you guys. And that I know true. that's weird. But, but you're obviously our kind of people. If yeah. you're listening. So. And I thought that that would make you guys happy to hear it, that we feel that way. We do feel that way. I feel very, very lucky that we have people listen to us. Because if not, it would just be me, you, babbling. Which is just our every, that ever, every day, anyway. Yeah. And we would just send it to our parents and they'd say, good job, sweeties. You girls are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, okay, cool. My sister actually two times this season has texted me and said... That's my favorite. That's my new favorite snacks episode. And then the next week said, that's my new favorite snacks episode. So. Jessica. I know. That is so nice. I don't know if Christy's ever listened to an episode, but that's okay. Except hers. Did she listen to her episode? I, I doubt it, but we should ask her. Get her back on. She's not a podcast person. She's like a house music person. That, that is the truth. One time she said... Never mind. We need to wrap this up. Okay. But anyways, keep listening to our last guest of season five. Okay. Our guest today is an NWSL Shield winner, Santa Clara alumni, um, defender for the US Women's National Team, a dog mom, healthy habits guru, Sophia Huerta. <laughs> Welcome to Oh Snacks. my gosh. You guys, I'm so excited to be here. Wow. We're so I excited am. to have you, So This is going to be so much fun. Are you so, so tired right now? Yeah, I am tired. I feel like I woke up. Well, I feel like when we took the trip to Europe, I would wake up every morning and I was tired. And like, that's just a continual theme. Like I just wake up and I'm tired. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I'm hoping this will uh, end soon. But yeah, I just think anytime you travel that far, it's just kind of tough on the, on the, the body, but I'm feeling okay. Yeah, it definitely sticks with you for a couple of days. But how yeah. was camp, obviously, aside from the results? Like, how was playing at Wembley? How was being in Europe with the team? Um, Well, <clears throat> playing at Wembley was honestly, like, one of the coolest things ever. Um, I feel like because I haven't been to, like, a World Cup or Olympics, I've, like, really never played in anything like that. Like, not even close. I think the most I played in front of was probably, like, around 30,000, which is great too but I think just in general like the energy at Wembley is unreal even just like leading up to the game because we were staying like really close to the stadium like just when I went to go get a coffee I mean everyone was already there like yeah. you're seeing U.S. jerseys England jerseys like it just was such a good energy it's like I woke up and just was like excited for the game and then like of course like 
I just think to play against a top competitor is like obviously what you want to do. It's just so fun to get out there and play against some of the best players. So, and then, yeah, like the moment we walked onto the field, it was just like, whoo, okay, it's go time. Like it is time. So yeah, I mean, there were so many people there, like 76,000 people, obviously they just came off winning the Euro. So they're doing well and they have a big support. Uh, so I think that was just like an awesome thing to be um, a part of. And then, like you said, of course, the results, in both games but in that first game not ideal I mean as you guys know we always want to win Mm -hmm. um but I also understand that like at one point every team that wins always faces adversity and goes through like a time period like this and like even hearing some of the veteran players talk about like oh this always happens like it's bound to happen no Mm -hmm. one's just gonna you know the U.S. is never just gonna win every game and have no issues leading to a major tournament it's probably not ideal either right like you want to face adversity so like I said, not ideal with the results, but I think like it's always a learning, mm. a learning moment, of course. And you can take like good things from the game, bad things. And then I think we're lucky because we face Germany next month and obviously a top competitor as well. So I think if we can like learn from those games and do well in these upcoming games, that will be like telling and will show like a lot of our character and whatnot. So yeah, but Wembley <laughs> was sick. Yeah, I feel like um, obviously like be, all of us being on the national team, we wanted you guys to win. But um, I would say from like a fan perspective, that was probably like an amazing game to watch. Um, the one against England, just because there was so much going on. You had like everything. You had going up a goal, going down a goal, um, thinking you had a goal, getting it called back. Like the whole atmosphere of that game, um, not as a U.S. member, was probably amazing. Yeah, I think that was like something important about it as well. And like Vlodko had said this, and that was something um, some of the veteran players had said as well. Like that was as close to a World Cup game you're going to get. Like it just it just was. I mean, with everything that was there, like the fans, um, Mm -hmm. people rooting against you. Honestly, like the fireworks when we were walking out, I was like, what's happening? Like I just was... (laughs) I just have never felt that before, you know? So like, it was like an emotion I had never felt. I just was, and I'm not sure if everyone is feeling the same way. Um, Cause again, people have been in that environment before, but I was just like, what is happening? What is going on? Um, but yeah, it was just the closest thing to a world cup game. So I think that's really important, you know, the world cup soon. So anything yeah. to like prepare. Totally. It sounds like it's, I, I remember before 2019, we had some games that were similar that didn't go our way. And, in the end, when you look back after winning, you say, oh, thank God we had those opportunities earlier to learn from them. Um, so maybe, and hopefully this will be one of those things the team looks back on and says, this is when we learned how to face things like this. Um, yeah. But that's great. I'm, I'm excited um, to see the team continue to grow. But we wanted to just switch gears a little bit and talk about kind of like your life in Seattle a little bit. Like, what are your, some of your favorite <laughs> things to do? Oh my gosh. Well, I love Seattle. I mean, to be completely honest, I don't live in Seattle. I live in Tacoma, which is like 45 minutes away. Um, but yeah, no, I love it here. I mean, I'm from Idaho, um, as you guys know, so I'm in love like the Pacific Northwest and just like the lifestyle here. Um, like when I was, uh, drafted to Chicago and then obviously I lived in Houston as well. I was like, it's just so thrown off by not seeing any mountains or like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because I just like, didn't grow up with that. And I, I mean, obviously I know not everywhere has mountains, but I just was like, this is so weird to me. So getting back to, to like Washington and being in a state where there's just like a hikes to go on and being outdoors, is just like part of the lifestyle. I like really love it. And, um, yeah. And I have my dog Daisy. Um, she's the best. I walk her all the time. So that's really fun. And then, yeah, just in general, like the team here is great. Like, I think like we have just such a good team and the environment is amazing. So to have both is just not always the case. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, love being here. And then my sister lives like 10 minutes away. Oh, so, I didn't know that. I know she she moved to Tacoma before the team even moved to Tacoma. So when, when the team was still in Seattle, so she had moved here before and then they moved to Tacoma and then I was traded and I, you know, so it ended up working out. It's like so fun. Oh, yeah, I love amazing. it here. Do you have any yeah. like favorite places to go or like favorite hikes, coffee shops? Do you like coffee? Oh my gosh, yeah, I love coffee. Okay, favorite which is coffee a new, shops. which is a new thing. 
Oh, it's a new thing. Yeah, I literally started drinking coffee like a year ago. Like I didn't drink it in college at all. And even when I was in Australia, you guys, I didn't drink coffee. You missed out there. I know. I know. So yeah, I do. I mean, Tacoma is like a little quieter. Um, there are a few coffee shops we like around here. Um, but it, again, it's kind of quiet. It's it's a really simple life over here. We just like play soccer, chill, <laughs> walk my dog. You know, it's not well, anything it's crazy. Working, but It's working for you guys. Oh my gosh. I know when you were introing me and you said shield winner, I was like, <laughs> I kind of, not that I forgot, but it just was such a wild scenario, you know, just with like Portland tying in uh-huh. that last game versus yeah, Gotham. And then, I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, it was a crazy final weekend, but I actually will just say how exciting, guys. like, I know Lynn is the queen of getting phone calls dirt while we're recording. It's Wait, just like, put it, it on, put it, it on silent. I know it just started. This has only happened the last two times. It, it's my niece mm-hmm. and she like, you know, those times where they're like, we'll just keep calling you back. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Hold Anyways, on. I was keep just going to say about how we finally had like a balanced season. So the, the table actually came out to the last weekend also because it was so close. But I feel like, you know, in like the Premier League, how all the games on the last day are at the same time. So like everybody's panicking, like checking the other scores while they're still playing. Yeah. I wish someday we would have it like that just because it would be so insane. But I yeah. do feel like that last weekend was like, oh my God, like so many things could still happen. Like what's going to happen? I know it was like that. It was like that. I feel like the last couple of weeks, especially. And yeah, yeah I'm kind of on the same page as you. Like it would have been. Uh, like interesting that the games were all at the same time because <laughs> yeah. it's like we knew we knew going into the game like that we could win the shield. Obviously the energy just like completely changed. Like we were just like holy That's crazy. Shit. Yeah, like we can win, which was obviously not expected at all. But I mean that's how I love that you said that. Like that's the best thing about this league. I know there's always like talks about which league is the hardest. Mm-hmm. Um but it's like that's one thing I can say about this league. Like any game, doesn't matter if you're first place or last, like you can win or lose. Yeah. Mm. Just depends on the day and it depends on who does well. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of the the best reasons to play in the NWSL is because you'd never have an easy game and it's always it like week in week out it's a challenge and it's uh, like not that I played this year, but like every ninety minute game is like a physical feat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Like every once in a while, it'd be nice to just like have an easy game, <laughs> you know? Because like it's like every game, it's like, oh, this is gonna be a battle for ninety minutes. But yeah, that's what makes our league so great, and it's so fun. It is so fun to play, and like, and it's just like amazing to see. Like I just feel like obviously the league has uh, tried to succeed and it hasn't in the past and it's the first time league obviously has been around for a while now we're getting to the point where it's like we're continuously adding expansion teams and it's competitive like mm-hmm. that's ideal obviously women's soccer is growing we all know that and that's like so great so but yeah if i could just go into a game knowing we were gonna win that would be <laughs> that'd be nice um Let's relax yeah uh, also you guys have been um like your team is so fashion forward so like do you enjoy picking out outfits before the games? Like, is that a part of your guys' culture? How how do you go to the game? Are you just like, I'm just going to show up? Or are you like, this is part of my routine. I have oh, to get a good picture. Soph wears such <sighs> good outfits. I was on your Instagram <laughs> oh before this, and I saw your your YSL, like, bomber jacket. I saw, oh like, you just have the cutest stuff. And, like, are oh you, like, gosh, going? Are you, are you, like, going up there being like, I already know my pose? Like, what? walk us through that. Okay, well, (laughs) come on. Oh my God. Well, okay. So it's funny because I feel like this was never a thing, you know, like going to games, I would just wear like sweats every time. No one was taking. We used to just wear matching North Carolina Courage tops every single game, home or away. Yeah. No one was taking pictures. For five years. Yeah. (laughs) For five years. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It just has changed so much. And like last year, I even last year we weren't doing this. And then we had like some rookies come in. Uh, Z was just like, Hey, we're going to start doing like F it up Fridays. So like we, people would come to like trainings dressed up. I wasn't going to get involved in that. That's like a little much, but then (laughs) I was like, no. Um, But then, yeah, we just started dressing up for games and I was like, you know, this is actually fun. Like, I feel like uh, it, I think like sometimes the day of the game, Obviously, everyone has their own routine, but I used to get, like, pretty stressed on game days. That's, like, changed, and I think something that has helped 
it's just kind of like distracting myself. And so I think getting ready for the game and dressing up actually does kind of like get my mind off of the game, um, which can be beneficial. But no, I am someone who knows my outfit. If the game's on Saturday, like I pick my outfit up out on Wednesday. Like I don't want to stress about, cause sometimes it can be stressful. Like I don't want to stress about what I'm wearing on game day. I already know what I'm wearing. Obviously I put it on then. Do I have my poses ready? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I like think about it. I'm like, I'm just going to go up and like put my hands on my hip or something, but nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. They have music playing for us though. It's so funny. You guys. That is so funny. It looks it's like really a whole fun. ordeal. Yeah. It looks, I mean, the it's pictures fun. are great. So yeah. I just, yeah, sometimes, shout out Jane. sometimes I see like what people are wearing on their feet though. And I'm like, that looks great, but I can't imagine like putting my feet back into like heels or something after a game. I'm like, how, how are you guys doing no. this? I have so much like no. respect for people who could do that. <laughs> Cause I, well, can't. first of all, my feet don't even fit into heels. <laughs> like my feet literally can't fit into them. Cause my bunions. I was going to say, what do. does that mean? I was going to say, would you have trolled <laughs> That's feet? what it means. What is happening? No. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> What's going on? No, I have, I have bunions. So like literally they're just, they just can't, it's not comfortable for me. So I'm with you. And when I see people on heels, I'm like, uh, okay. Like <laughs> whatever you want to do, but that looks painful. But I'm, some people do wear the heels like out from the game. But other people bring like a change of shoes or whatever. So, but it is fun. It is fun. You it, guys dress up in Kansas fun. City too, though. Our teammates do sure do, and they look amazing. But what just happened to your voice? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore it. But we've established on this podcast a few times that I, <clears throat> I like refuse to not wear Kansas City current gear to the games. So like, yeah, she like I, took a hard stance in the beginning of the year that she was like, I'm always gonna wear current gear, and from that moment, she's like just double down. And it's like, Love why? It. Literally, why am I the father of the team? I don't know. But like, <laughs> Clearly, I have to like rep or else. <laughs> rep or else. It's like I mean, so it is weird. Kinda, well, no, I think it's cool, Sam. Oh, thank I think you it's so. cool. I think it's cool too. <laughs> As I'm sure you've heard, Lynn and I are big pod listeners ourselves. We found a show you women sports fans won't want to miss. Tune in to season three of Flame Bears to hear from women Olympians and Paralympians from around the world. Becky Sauerbrunn, Sue Bird. Dutch wheelchair tennis player, Didi De Grout, and maybe even some snacks appearances will be part of this new season. Hear directly from these masters of grit and resilience to learn about the issues that matter most to them and how they've been able to overcome obstacle after obstacle. During these challenging times, these women are an endless source of hope and inspiration. Get ready to be inspired as season three just launched. Listen to Flame Bearers wherever you get your podcasts. We don't have to tell you that the news can be a lot most days. You probably know The Skim for their signature newsletter, which makes it easy to stay informed on what's happening in the world. But did you know they also have a podcast to help you take on the news? Skim This is a show that makes you smarter by bringing you the headlines you truly need to know. They break down the biggest stories and talk to the experts, and they do it in a way that's both fun and personal. So follow and listen to Skim This every Thursday, wherever you get your podcasts. Well, so, so, okay. So on our podcast, we do some, I messed this up last time, personal stuff, some soccer stuff, some real stuff and some fun stuff. So we're kind of just going to move into this little real section right now. They're like more serious questions, but I think it's still just going to be fun and interesting to talk about. But I actually wanted to just follow up on something you just said about how you used to get really nervous before games. And I wanted, Mm -hmm. you said like distracting yourself has helped, but if you could just talk a little bit about like what it was that made you so nervous and like how you started to feel better about it? Yeah, no, I, uh, this is a good question. I feel like in general, just because of how my journey has gone, um, even from when I was younger, I just kind of feel like I always had to like prove myself. Like I never really made youth teams. Like no one ever really talked about me as being like a high recruit going into college and not even really leaving college. Like I was doubtful whether when or where I was going to drafted, going to get drafted. And if I was going to, um, so I feel like I've always just had kind of like a chip on my shoulder and that has added some pressure on to like my performances because it's like, well, I think that I'm this kind of player. No one else thinks it's so like, I need to prove that every time I step out on the field, but like, I think you both know it's literally impossible. No matter how good you are, the best athletes, of all time, like you're going to not have great games sometimes, you know? So it's like, what can you do 
to make sure that you're like feeling good going into the game and not putting too much pressure on yourself. And so that's something like I worked on a lot because like, if you go to when I was getting called in to the national team and then I stopped getting called in like that pressure during those three years that I wasn't getting called in was like really, really there just, okay, well, I want to get back on the national team. So what does that mean? That means I have to be the best player on my club team or one of the best players on my club team every game. I need to score goals, assist because I was playing forward at the time. Like I have to do all of these things. And so I feel like I would just go into the games having so much pressure and putting so much pressure on myself that I just like wasn't enjoying it. <laughs> like I wasn't having that much fun, you know? So I feel like I finally got to a point, which I think I've talked about a lot in like a lot of interviews recently, just getting to a point where I switched the narrative of like taking just the pressure off and, and switching my definition of success. And I feel like I got to a point where it wasn't like, if I wasn't on the national team, it didn't mean that. I wasn't good or like I wasn't a good soccer player that my life isn't good. Right. And so I feel like that came even to game days, like, okay, I need to take the pressure off. And so what can I do? And I feel like I um, took the pressure off in the sense of like remembering or reminding myself that like, I'm not going to play great all the time. Just have to do things that are going to help me get to that like state where I'm feeling good. And I think like one thing I've really changed honestly is like my game day routine. And my college coach always told me that. You know, when in college, like, I don't know, like my college coach always tried to like teach me lessons and like I was hearing him, but like when you're 20, you like don't, you can't really like take it in. And he'd always be like, habits, habits are so important. Game day routine is really important. And I'm like, okay, like whatever. But now, now that I'm older, I'm like, yeah, the game day routine is the most important thing for me. Like I am like locked in game day routine. So it's like, I don't have to like make a lot of decisions the day of the game. I'm like really focused on just being good so I can go into that game with everything good and I can mm-hmm. just focus on my performance you know yeah is so was there anybody that was like helping you change these habits or were you just like able to just turn it off and say like you know what so if this isn't helpful to you you got to do these things or did like do you talk to somebody um like how did you come to that realization I've had a lot of help <laughs> <laughs> it isn't hot well, that's all because no, I'm just kidding. But no, no, of course. Like I, yeah, I mean, I have a life coach who I've been working with since I was 22. Her name's Lisa. Um, and she also went to Santa Clara. So we, we've had connections and we just, um, when I was younger, we, you know, just kind of established this, this work we wanted to do together. Um, so I've been working with her for a while. Um, and, you know, of course, like she's been helping me with like the mental side and we've gone through just like, just how I like view life in general, which I think helps like on the field as well um and yeah so I've I've worked with her for a long time and then I just think like you we play with so many players to go through the same thing so it's like I I think as you get older you start just like observing more and like I you know you start hearing people who are like Sam do you remember when we had that conversation on the bus about just like stress and being Uh able to manage it I don't know you know what I mean it's like you you know that everybody's going through it so it's a thing it's not like something that you can avoid or just like not take care of or not ad- address. And so it's just something that like, I know um, will help me in life in general and will help me on the field. It's just like getting my habits right. And like having a certain narrative and just like calming down a little bit. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I think we all, as you both know, like I literally think about you guys all the time. Like this career is like a little cruel, you know, whether you're injured or, you know, you're not getting called in or you're not playing or you're playing, whatever it may be, you have a bad game, like it is cruel. And so it's just like kind of managing that and trying to like manage the highs and the lows and, and all of that. So definitely I've had a lot of help. Oh my gosh. And talk about it all the time. Like every yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you share a couple of your, the habits you stick to on game day? Like, I love that you said you don't have to make that many decisions. So I was just curious, oh, yeah. like, uh, eat, cause I know game days can take so many forms, like whether you're home in your apartment or you're on the road with the NWSL or you're on the road with the national team. So like, what are some things that you find you can do the same, no matter what kind of day it is? Yeah, that's a really good point. I think like it's hard because I have such a routine when I'm home and then we travel Mm -hmm. so much and it Mm -hmm. is hard to keep that same routine. Like it just, even like going into camps, that's what I say is one of the hardest things about going into camp is that like, you're just out of your routine. Yeah. And it's like, you have to find a new one every two weeks. It's just kind of like, that's not how we like, that's not how I function. I don't know about you guys. It's just like, can be difficult, but, um, yeah, I just, 
I like always eat the same thing on game day. Um, cause I just like know what makes me feel good. What's not going to upset my stomach and like, what's going to help me perform. Um, I always, uh, yeah, I do like, I do a few things. Like I always Norma tech for like an hour. Um, I always watch like an EPL game, usually like the full 90 minutes. I'm just watching. Cause it just makes me like, I think it, it like gets me excited about playing. And then also just like watching these players do certain things players do certain things I'm like oh I can do that like I'm going to try that in mm -hmm. the game tonight so but also it's just like a distraction as well like I'm just watching mm -hmm. people play and like I love watching soccer um this one is kind of hard what I'm about to say I do like to take Epsom salt baths on game days but sometimes the hotels I'm staying at don't have baths uh -huh. yeah. that's always a bummer so I have to kind of like not be too attached to that one um and yeah, I just, I, I try to go on walks too, just to get out there, like go on like a half mile, mile walk before the game. So there are just like a few things. And then, yeah, I, this is like TMI, but I shave every game day. I have to, <laughs> it's like, I have to, there have been times where I forgot wow. my razor and I'm like, Oh, gotta go to CVS. Gotta go. Wow. That's, that's great. Smooth girl. I know it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. As long no, as those working. are great. I it's know. Keep for doing you. them all. You're, you're doing great. I know. I find, you know? <laughs> oh, go ahead. Oh, well, no, I was just going to say, you guys know, like, sometimes the, when you have a game at eight, it's like, what are you going to do? I know. You have yeah. all day. I know. You I have find to try to fill the time. I find it like when the game is like, not super early, but like a, a midday game or like when you go into camp and like the eating is just different than when you're at home. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm just like, oh, when should I eat? Like, is it going to be great during this time this isn't like my normal at home I like feel like I'm eating more at camp than I would be at my house so I agree like sometimes it's hard you're like oh how do I keep my same routine but also not skip out on meals oh my gosh I know the eating thing I like <laughs> Sam I, I literally like have heard this story about you and I'd actually like love Hi. to hear it from you personally oh but... I'll tell it <laughs> But I'm like, didn't one it. time you were trying to get like this, the perfect amount of carbs in yeah. before a game, <laughs> you yeah. like ended up eating too much. Yeah. So <laughs> this is a hundred percent on me. The nutritionist <laughs> was just telling us all that you, you want to get a certain amount of carbs per bot for, per like how much you weigh. So yeah. I like did all this math and I was like, I weigh a lot. So like, I need to have like nine or 10 servings of carbs, like before like three and a half, four hours before the game. So I was down there, oatmeal, <laughs> a bagel, energy balls, pancakes, like literally <laughs> friggin' anything and everything, fruit, berries. I And I was like, okay, this was like nine or 10 servings of carbs. But it was twice as much as I usually eat. <laughs> but there I am, like, obviously bragging about it to everybody. Like, it's not that much, you guys. Like, you can, what? You can't eat a bagel? Like, oh, well, watch me. I'll have two. Being, like, so tough about how much I could eat. And then we skirmished boys, and I, everybody was playing a half. And so I played for 45 minutes. And I came off the field like, you guys, my stomach <laughs> I'm sick. so bad. It was like all the blood was in my stomach hurting me and then I had no blood in my legs to run around like I literally had like this collect like it was so painful it and literally then, sounds yeah. like my nightmare yeah it was horrible but then obviously like I talked to the nutritionist and like realized that I made some mistakes and that I was a little bit too gung <laughs> I, it was not her fault at all I was like just way too gung-ho and also like you guys know how sauna and rose will like rile me up and be like, yes. what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that's too much food. And then I'll obviously be like, no, it's not. Like, you guys <laughs> are just so lame. You can't eat enough. Yeah, you like doubled down. I doubled down. And then like literally <laughs> ate two times too much food. It was ridiculous. Oh, no. I don't know about you guys, but like, if I don't get my eating right before a game, it can just mess everything up. Like, if I'm too full, I'm in my head and I'm like, I'm not going to be able to run. Yeah. Well, too full. T talk to us about your, we have on here, so your some of your healthy hobbies um <laughs> which like hiking running but i feel like eating healthy and like eating a certain diet has been important for you and like a journey that you've been on so do you want to talk about that a little bit oh my god i would love to talk about it <clears throat> um yeah i know my my eating has been really interesting for me like this is i'm gonna just let it all out um because i'm passionate about talking about this just because i feel like you know i think just as athletes like the importance of like what we're putting in our body and just even the way we like view our bodies can kind of be 
messed up a little bit from like a young age, you know, like I can just Mm -hmm. tell you guys and be honest, like I have dealt with like eating disorders my whole life and have had a really like poor view on the way, like I feel about my body and, and all of that stuff. So, um, it's always been like a constant, a battle for me with like what I'm putting in my body. Like, um, and like I said, I just kind of dealt with eating or eating disorder. So it's like, I'll go through phases where I'm like not nourish, nourishing enough or I'm eating too much. And it like affects my career. And I feel like it has, um, for sure, as I've been a professional, I've had like years where I'm not performing as well. And I know it's because like, I'm not putting the right things in my body and I'm just dealing with like the eating disorder. And so I've worked on that a lot. Like I've, um, worked with someone, um, like our nutritionist on the rain and she's helped me with that as well. So I think like now I'm at a point where I've, I've worked on it a lot and I have like a, uh, a good toll on like what I'm putting in my body. And I think I viewed it as so much of like, Oh, I want to be skinny or I'm like, I'm comparing myself to other athletes and I didn't look like them. And so it was always just this like stressful thing for me. Like I was constantly always thinking about like food. And that was, and I, it's, it's something I haven't talked about a lot, but it is something that I always dealt with. And then just being like a professional athlete, like that's, that's really hard. It's stressful. Like we're putting our bodies through so much. And then I was putting my body through even more than just mm-hmm. like running 90 minutes and working out every day and all that stuff. So it was like really, really stressful on like my mind and my body. And so I think now I, the way I view food is the way I view food is much different. Like the relationship I have with food is much different than it has been in the past. Um, and so for me, it's just important to like put the right things in my body um, and like stop labeling. I used to do that as well. Like, oh, this food's bad. This food's good. And like would restrict from eating certain foods. Like I didn't eat a bagel for like five years because I have this. I know. I know. So sad. I love bagels. I have a bagel every morning now. Oh. But I had this like, I had this like view about a, a bagel. Yeah. Like I'm like, yeah. oh, a bagel's gonna make me fat, which is not true, you know. So it's it's a lot. It's been a lot for um, a lot of years. But yeah, now I'm just to the point of like, I don't want to label food. I I just want to put whatever in my body that's gonna help me perform the best. And I think um, that's where I'm at. And so I was vegan for like a while. Um, not vegan anymore. I, I don't eat meat, um, for like moral reasons, not for necessarily health reasons. Um, but yeah, I try my hardest to like put the best thing in my body, but like, I can't deny that I love to splurge every once in a while, like love me some sugar cookies and ice cream <laughs> and peanut M&Ms, <laughs> you know, cause it's all about balance. Right. And that is something that I've had to learn through like my stuff as well. Cause I would restrict a lot, but it's like, you can allow yourself to have you know, certain things. It's just like, you know, it's all about habits. And I just had some bad habits. And now, you know, I've moved on from that. And I've, I've worked a lot on that. Sorry, that was a lot. No, no. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you, you so much. For, that. No, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, that's probably like not something so easy to share. So we feel very honored to have you share that. But um, is that something that you have like, like we said, you had to like change your habits with soccer. And is that like something that you decided, okay, I want to get healthy eating wise for soccer. Or was this something that you were just like, so if you're going down a crazy eating yeah. path that, and you just had to fix that. And in turn, soccer fell into another, does that make sense? Does my question make oh, sense? Oh, it totally, no, it totally makes sense for me. It was definitely both. Like I knew that I definitely performed better when I was eating better. Like that's no secret. That is why nutrition is like a top conversation in all locker rooms than on, on teams, because we all know that. I mean, you have to put the right things in your body in order to like perform and recover Mm -hmm. simple, simple stuff there. So I knew when I ate better, I performed better. Um, but I think like, I also just had this fear that I was going to be dealing with this disorder or, you know, this relationship with food, like my whole life. And I feel like I don't want to do that. Like, I, I always felt like kind of weird that I thought about food so much. Like, and I would look at my other teammates or look at other people and think like, I know they don't think about food as much as I think about food. And it just like, wasn't what I wanted to consume my energy with anymore. Like I, I didn't have the tools. I feel like when I was younger to really be aware of what was happening or like why I had um, like a certain relationship with food or, you know, 
a view with my body and stuff. Like I didn't really understand it. And then I got to a point where I'm like, well, I want to be better at soccer. And I also don't want to like think about this the rest of my life and deal with the like yo-yo of like eating healthy, going on diets, like the amount of diets I went on, you know, like it was a lot. <laughs> it was, it was, it was a lot. I don't diet at all anymore. I don't like do um, like cleanses at all, but that was like something I was doing in the middle of season, right? Like that's not good. Um, so it was both for me, Lynn, for sure. It was like, I want to perform better. And I also just want to live like a more peaceful life. And it seemed at times that it was like, just, it was really like chaotic for me, like mm. with, with surrounding food, which I don't expect everyone to understand, but for people who have dealt with these things, like a lot of what I say will probably make sense, which is why, like, I'm so open about talking about it because I don't think a lot of people would think that like professional athletes go through this, but like, I've went through it most of my career up until like a year ago. It's like crazy. So yeah, I think something I'm taking from what you're saying is that like, yeah, of course, figuring this out or, or making progress in this area was helpful for soccer, but also just for you as a person, like soccer completely aside, you are going to have a whole life and be like a happy, healthy person after soccer and to kind of work on this thing that was bothering you for that person as well was really important. And it wasn't just to be better at soccer. It was also like for mm -hmm. just you as, as a person. Yeah. And I think like going off that as well, it's like, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have been thinking about this a lot as you both have been injured. It's like soccer is amazing, but it's also not everything. And like, like I was talking about earlier, like we put so much pressure on ourselves and it's like, it, it's unnecessary. <laughs> it's like unnecessary. And it also doesn't help your performance. So it's like, I had all, I had these issues with eating. And like I said, the way I viewed my body and like, it's not a coincidence that once I got that, under control that my soccer got better you know it's just and that's why this whole like um talk about mental health or like and therapy and whatnot it's like that's all intertwined like all of that if you're not taking care of yourself just in general as a human being like it's I it would be impossible for me to be able to perform at my best if I wasn't taking care of like me you know yeah. mm -hmm. so it's all connected in my opinion yeah I agree I think that like in when you're a professional athlete, you are having to watch what you eat and so you can perform and you're trying to recover the best you can and X, Y, and Z. But then you also, sometimes for me, like when people who don't play and they'll make little comments like, oh, you can't eat that. It'll be like a piece of cake. And you're like, well, why not? Like, why you can't, <laughs> like maybe you can't eat that, but I'm going to eat that. But, and I just think that that's like, you never know who you're talking to or you never know what mm -hmm. somebody's going through. And, um, yeah, I just feel like there's this like stigma about athletes sometimes that like, you have to eat perfect. And you're like, no, I, I'm a human too. Like I want to indulge in the sweets and the fun. And like you said, there's, totally. a ba there's a balance. And so I love that you have been able to like be a go on this journey and find out what uh, works best for you. So you can not just be like an amazing soccer player, but like an amazing person um, off mm -hmm. the field as well. Um, so with that being said, we, we, um, we wanted to know like the soap off the field too. And so are there some things that like are so important to you that you're like an advocate for that really speak to you off the field? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like what we were just talking about, I'm like super passionate about like, um, just mental health and I think just health in general. Um, and like, I'm obviously really passionate about dogs. Like I res I rescued my dog. So, um, I'm passionate about her so much. Um, but I mean, nothing like anything crazy. I feel like I'm a pretty open book. Like, I think you can kind of get an idea of like what I'm passionate about and what I like just based off of like social media. So I feel like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm passionate about those things and, um, fashion as well. Um, that's pretty much it though. You guys, I'm pretty basic actually. <laughs> um, pretty uh, boring. I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like I have two questions, but I'm going to ask them at the same time because I, I don't okay. know. I, <laughs> I, I've been thinking a lot about, I've been injured for a long time. So I've been thinking a lot about like, I don't know who I am and like how I would describe myself if I couldn't use soccer. 
I'm actually just going to ask this one. So mm-hmm. when we were introducing you, Soph, we were like, she's an NWSL Shield winner. She's a Santa Clara alum. She's a defender. And then we said she's a dog mom. She's a healthy habits guru. And, like, those are things that you, like, I think put out. But three of the five were soccer. Mm-hmm. So I, I feel like my question is, like, what did we miss? Like, what is, what's important about you that has nothing to do with soccer? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Like put you on the spot. <laughs> Who are you? I'm also trying to answer this question still. Um so no, but I mean, I think like I think that's actually a, a great question something I need to think about more, but can also be like scary to think about at times too. Like I'm sure mm-hmm. like you said you've been thinking about it a little bit more cuz you've been injured, but I have been thinking about it. Not that I'm at the end of my career, um because let's hope that I can play for a little longer but like then when soccer is done then then who am I like I I think that can be like a scary thing to think about Mm -hmm. um so oh gosh who am I well I I do like the health guru like I would never identify like I wouldn't say that about myself but I love it and I like yes I love that um and yeah I think a big thing is just like I think just like I guess I would want to say mental health. Like, I feel Mm. like that's something that obviously is being talked about a lot, but I think that's something that I have been dealing with and working on since I was really, I mean, honestly, since I was 22. So I think that like what we kind of talked about, it's like a lot of people probably assume that as pro athletes, like we have a really cool job, life is good. Um, But as you guys know, like it's difficult and this job can come with a lot of like, mentally tough situations and it's like it's what's going to get you through that and I think like working on in your mind is really important and not just like because of soccer but just in general like and my college coach used to say this too Jerry Smith shout out Jerry Smith from Santa Clara um but he would always (laughs) say he would always say like life is hard life is hard and like in college you're like yeah okay but like yeah you get to an age where you're like yeah it's hard Um, And it's going to continue getting harder. I mean, it's going to be great too. Like, let's be real. There's going to be amazing moments, but it's also going to get difficult. So like, can, do you have the mental like maturity and toughness to be able to like get yourself through certain situations? Cause it can be difficult. So I think I would say I'm pretty passionate about that as well. I love that. That was such a great answer, Soph. Oh my gosh, thanks. I felt really just like, what am I going to say? I here? was real. I like really put you on the spot. And I like literally <laughs> yeah. hate nothing more. So sorry. <laughs> I feel like me and Lynn should have to answer too now because we made you. Oh, you it. should. Fine. Go, go, Sam. Well, I, I think I'm like really trying to work on it. I think that we also so often like define ourselves by our relationships with other people, which is hard. I think it can give you like a tether. Like, mm-hmm. how can I be a good daughter, sister, wife, friend. And what about those roles are like have qualities that I like see in myself or appreciate about myself or want to have. I like totally define myself by being a dog mom. I think (laughs) getting thin, like changed everything. I literally think it's like one of the most like pivotal things that has happened to me is like realizing I could love something so much. (laughs) so true I know so true I know and then I think I'm like kind of like working on it I feel like with soccer it was it was so easy to define myself like that because I feel like it like kind of made me special and it made me I was good at something and it was like so all-consuming that it's like of course I'm a soccer player like that's what I wanted to say first And then I think being forced to like have a little bit of distance from that, I'm like, well, what else am I? Like if I'm not defining myself by my relationship to other people or to my dog, like how am I like, like what, what's my priority of like how I want to live. And so I feel like I'm like having to think about that a lot right now. And like, I guess I'm working on it. No, totally. Like, is it like, is kindness the most important thing is honesty is family like is it what's the thing that you're just gonna be like that's my motto and I don't I mean I think I have to like think about it no totally I mean was that just like such a crazy answer (laughs) no it's not I think that like 
I think that's the struggle though, is because when you are sure. one thing, you, not mm-hmm. one thing, but when you've like dedicated yourself to one thing for so long, I think that what's different about our careers than other people's careers is that we start at such a young age and you just, that's all we know. And so how do we now separate ourselves from this? The one thing that we know how to do really, really well. And mm-hmm. I think that like people always say like, okay, you have to, like soccer is going to come to an end and you, you're going to have to get another career, sadly for us. Um, unlike men's sports, like we just, that's the reality of it is we'll probably have to get another job. Yeah. But like, I don't know if you guys feel this way, but I, I'm like, but I already found the passion that I, I love. And so having to try to like redefine yourself, I think is mm-hmm. hard, hard and scary, but it could also be super exciting. Um, so yeah, Sam, I don't think that was a crazy answer at all. I just think that's what well, people go through. Like, I, I just think I really bared my like... soul there and was not planning on doing that. <laughs> I mean, I, I it, don't... it was your question, Sam. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Lynn, yeah, do you want to answer this to yourself? Uh, so. Sure. I mean, I think that <coughs> me being injured too, I think this year more than any year in the past, I've like done more things outside of soccer and it's made me realize that like, oh, like when I come back, I need to make space and time to find that piece of Lynn and like dive into like real life quote unquote things because I really enjoyed doing them this year. Um, but I don't know, Sam, I feel like, I don't know. I really value my family and the relationships I have there. So being like a family person, I feel like Mm -hmm. I am my most complete best self when I am with like my nieces and nephews and Marley and my family, like when I have my family Mm -hmm. around me, um, but at the same time, I'm also somebody who needs to like be alone. So like, I don't, I don't really know. And I think that balance maybe. Yeah. Like trying to find that balance. Yeah. Um, and like having a creative outlet, like whatever that may mm-hmm. be, I don't know what that's going to look like for me. Cause I think that during soccer, you can only do so much. Um, but after I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to find something that where I could be creative. Basically I want to have this, like I've always said this before, this same life, but Minus the soccer, so kind of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, whatever that is. Just sleeping in, going to pottery. Yeah. Going to yoga. Having a Hanging juice. out with friends. I actually am so on that vibe, Lynn. I would also like to have the same life. Yeah, no I just want to do... Yeah, we just want to do this, but, like, replace the soccer with, like, a workout in the morning instead. Like, is that a job? Is that a thing? Yeah. Well, we Can should... I identify as that? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It is, you know, like it's so, I mean, everyone deals with this. It's just so crazy because it's like, we're so committed to this sport. Like we have been literally since we were so young, like, like you said, our whole, our whole lives have been soccer since we were like four or five. And then it's like, you get into your professional um, career. And then it's like national team. And you're just told that like, you have to sacrifice everything to be on the national team, like to really get the dream you got to sacrifice. So it's like, you literally can't really do anything other than soccer, you know, or you feel that way at least. And so when soccer is over with, it's like, well, now what? But I think it's important. Like you said, like finding the balance, figuring out like what fills you cup, fills your cup, what makes you feel good. Like, and kind of, I've always been told to do that like now instead of mm-hmm. waiting for like when you retire, mm-hmm. because I think it can be like a more difficult transition. So to start like, you know, dabbling in things now to, to see what you like, what makes you happy. And like, obviously yeah. Sam dogs make us really happy. <laughs> Daisy literally, it's like, it's, it's so funny. Like it just has put things into perspective for yeah. me. And like, I have to think about something other than myself. Like I have to like attend to my dog every day. Mm-hmm. So it's just interesting. Anyways, you guys, that was difficult it, for us. It is so answer. interesting. I'm glad we asked that question though, because I feel like that, we had such great conversation around it. Um, Lynn, I feel like we should move on to the sponsored yeah. segment. I agree. Okay. So our sponsors at Flame Bear host the most resilient athletes on the planet. So we're going to do a nod to them. So, um, and do some goat trivia. So we're going to give you their accolades and then you take a guess at who it is. Are you ready? 
Oh, sure. Okay, yeah, it's like sports trivia. Okay, well, I let's let's see what happens. Okay. No, this, no promises that I'm going to be good. This Olympic bronze medalist and two-time national champion figure skater teaches the younger generation the power of resilience and strength as the story of her career is one of the best in sport. As of March 2021, she is the fifth highest ranked women's singles skater in the world. Come on, Soph. You got it. You guys, I really... and. On top of not knowing a lot about figure skating, I'm I'm not really great with names, so I don't know. That's okay, Soph. Don't worry about it. The answer is Brady Tennell, and who of our listeners, whoever wants to hear her story, head over to the Flame Bearers podcast. All right. <laughs> All right, so moving on. This is my favorite part of the podcast where we get to have a little fun and pepper our guests with random questions. Yay. This is the fun section. Okay. What's your favorite fruit? Apple. Green, red, gala, honey crisp. I love a honey crisp. I love a honey crisp. Okay. Do you put like peanut butter on it? Do you do anything? You just like to bite in? Or it depends. Oh, well, I, yeah, I can always eat peanut butter with my apple for sure. If it's available, I'll do it. Um, but I also can just like enjoy an apple on its on its own. Totally. Is it this? Is it, can't you tell this is the fun section? Yeah. <laughs> How okay. much fun are we having talking about apples? <laughs> Wait, I need to now know: Are you a smooth peanut butter, crunchy? Smooth. Same. And I'm peanut butter, no almond butter, please. I'm with you on it's that. Peanut butter. I will also just say, you know the peanut butter from Whole Foods that you get fresh from the thing, but it's yes. like not yeah. smooth. I like that. Mm. Yeah, okay. I know what you're saying. It's I like fresh that. ground. It's what it's the best. Yeah, but it's, I have had that and it's good. good. It's v good. I'm Very also a good. crunchy person though, so I'm just throwing mm. that out there. What's your favorite vegetable? <laughs> uh, like a, a sweet potato, probably. You love sweet potatoes. I do know love this about sweet you. potatoes. You eat yeah. them all the time. Uh, daily, probably. Wow. What's how do you cook? How do you like to cook them the best? Um, I feel like I just like chop them up, put them in the oven, like olive oil, some salt and garlic salt, maybe some nutritional yeast as well. Um, wow. And just like put it in the oven for like thirty five minutes. There it is, yeah. Sofia Huerta's sweet potato recipe. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move away from this food question. So, what <laughs> No, is that's a good question. <laughs> Ask it. Things you put in your salad. Oh, okay. Well, um, things I put in my salad. Okay, I feel like a salad that I would make would be like uh, some spinach, mixed greens. Um, I would do like onions cucumbers probably um some goat's cheese for sure um some why am i blanking on those beans a girl bonzo bean sorry uh. the brain fart there um and there's this really good dressing from whole foods it's called garlic expressions and it's so 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 good and that's like the dressing i usually use yum okay so garlic good. expressions i'm gonna go get some do, yeah, would I'm you really ever good. put like some nuts in? I don't know why I'm stuck on this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some nuts I think, maybe? Like, seeds? No. Yeah. I think if you have like some sunflower seeds, um, it's always good to add like a some. Crunch. Yeah. Yeah. Are you somebody who likes Gorgeous. to put fruit? Oh, in? avocado as well. No. Okay. okay. No fruit in the salad. Fruit? Oh, no, no. Like a strawberry dressing? That's, absolutely not. That's a sin, I guess. I would do it. I just don't like it. I used, to, I used to not be like that. I mean, I used to be like that, and now I am not. Oh, you like you like fruit in your Yeah. In your I don't salad? know what's happened in these last couple of years, but... Lynn, this is totally different, but Lynn made yeah. me this peach and tomato with balsamic glaze. I'm sure that's so good. It was... Divine. Divine. You know what? One of, I had someone who had a recipe, and it was like arugula with pear 
and oh, balsamic yeah. and like walnuts and that was good too so i don't know why i was so aggressive about the no yeah. on the salad it's okay i'm sorry we forgive you <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> it's not my go-to but it's not horrible fair enough um what's the furthest you've ever run at once yeah <laughs> yes 14, probably 14 miles ew why i know uh, well, because, so there's this half marathon in Boise, it's called Roby Creek and it's the hardest half marathon in the Northwest, I think pretty sure, but wow, fact check me and that it was during COVID and I was going to run it, but it got canceled because of COVID. So me and my guy friend were, we were just like, yeah, whatever, let's go run it. So we, we ran, we ran it. So it was like 13.5 wow. and we are different in that way. Yeah. You, yeah. Though, so if that's amazing, that also must've been beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And it was, it was, it was hard. A lot of it is uphill. Like most of it is uphill. So yeah. Do you feel like after gosh. soccer, you're going to be like just a marathon runner? Cause I feel like that's right up your alley. Nope. I, yeah, no, I, I thought about this. I feel like before I would be like, yeah, when soccer's done, I'm going to like do triathlons, half marathons, like marathon. And as I'm getting older, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to do that really. Like, I feel like I want to run a marathon for sure, but to like do it competitively, I just, I feel like I'm gonna just want to do. Oh, less. that's what I meant. I didn't. I Peaceful didn't mean like. Things. Yeah, I didn't mean like competitively. Oh. I just meant like just somebody who. Oh yeah. Does a lot of them. Yeah, I bet I will. I'll run. I bet I'll run like. A lot. I'll run a lot. I like running. It makes me like I. It's like peaceful for me. My mom like is a runner too, so I grew up running with her. It's just like kind of a thing. That's lovely. That. What a healthy habit. <laughs> Um, this, Lynn, this is your question. You ask it. Okay. If you could be any type of dog, what would it be? Or what would you be? Oh, I, well, I love, I love pit bulls. So probably a pit bull. Sam, what about you? I'd be, I would be Finn. <laughs> I yeah, knew you were going to say that. I, I would be, a, a, I want to be Finn's best friend. So I would want to be a cavapoo that looked just like him. You know what I've been thinking about doing? I have this picture of me and Finn and our hair color is so similar, but not <laughs> quite. And so I was thinking about bringing it to the hairdresser and saying, could you just make my hair the exact same color as Finn? You should. You absolutely should. <laughs> like I'm like, so if like, I'm literally not kidding. I love him. Like I want his hair down. He was a key. When I met him, he was super cute and I loved him. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Everybody. So f- came to babysit Finn one time when he had diarrhea and so was in town <laughs> and I asked Rose I had to go somewhere I forget what I was even doing the game was, you guys had a game oh yeah so it was when the national team was in town and I said to Rose can you please come babysit Finn because he has diarrhea he needs to go out every hour and she brought Soph and Alana and they babysat <laughs> Finn it was so sweet he was such a good dog and uh Fortunately, we didn't have any incidents or accidents or anything. So no it was a good experience for me. Oh, oh, poor Finn. I think you should do that. Sam has like slight ginger undertones. And I think that would look really good on you. You should just lean into that. <laughs> I'm good. I think I'm going to. You I should. Did, you know Might me though well. with, with the hair like appointment situation. And I was like looking up salons. Yeah. And like I, you can't make an appointment online. So I just gave up. Because I'm like, God forbid I call a place. <laughs> I know that is one thing like making appointments. I couldn't think of anything worse. I know. I kind of agree. Uh, okay. So if we're running out of time, so this has been the th- running theme of the season is what is that? What's happening with socks? Like are no show oh, socks know. still a thing? Do you wear ankle socks? Do you wear crew socks? What are the, what, what's the sock thing? You guys, I heard you have this discussion with Mal and I was laughing so much because <laughs> <laughs> you guys were like, my ankles can't be showing. Um, and I thought that was so funny. I feel like, I feel like, uh, for the most part, I wear lo- like longer socks, like just crew socks with my tennis shoes for sure. Um, every once in a while I'll do like no shows, but I feel like it just looks weird. Like I just doesn't, right? it, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good with the outfits I wear. Usually like if I'm going on a run, like I'll probably wear like shorter socks for sure. But like, if I'm just like hanging and I'm wearing clothes like I feel like the crew socks look much better I agree with that sometimes you just look down and you're like this just doesn't look right looks weird it looks weird okay but I think I think some people could I mean I see people wearing small socks it's like fine it's just not my thing love it (laughs) love it 
Okay. Okay. So before we wrap up every interview, we give our listeners a chance to ask their own questions. And don't forget, if you want to send us your questions, tweet us with the hashtag AskSnacks. So this is at Caitlin Braxton asks, what is going on in this picture? Uh, so if you can't see it, but it is Sam with a cowboy hat on next to a picture with SpongeBob with a cowboy hat on. I saw it. Yes, I reposted Great. it from the Kansas City Current. And the caption is, who you call in five seed? And at first I was like, who made this? And then I realized it was the actual, my actual team that made it. And I was like, oh. That's hilarious. Oh, thanks, guys. I accept, and I reposted it, because it's actually hilarious. That's <laughs> funny. It reminds me of a story about one time when I got called Billy Ray Cyrus by a man <laughs> at Stagecoach. And I was like, oh, no, by a girl. She was trying to be mean to me. And she goes, okay, Billy Ray Cyrus. And I was like, oh. <laughs> So rude. I know. That's so but, funny. Whatever. Okay, and a special You're not going to ask, you didn't answer, like, what's happening in this picture, though. Oh. <laughs> why, do you, why do you have this on your head? What is going on in this pic? We went on stage at the, this, or we had our stadium groundbreaking the other day, and we went on stage oh, to, yeah. like, thank our owners, and there was a band on stage, so while I was talking, he just, like, put a cowboy hat on my head, and I was like, <laughs> okay, why don't you just turn me into the laughing stock of the community, but fine. <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Um, okay, a special question from our Ask Snacks section, exclusive to the Just Women Sports newsletter and very fitting for this month from Becca Y. What's your favorite Halloween-themed movie? Well, are we all answering or just oh, me? Just Everybody. you. I thought you were going to go first. Okay, okay. I feel like um, Hocus Pocus is definitely good. Yeah. That's Halloween on my mind town. because the ha- – oh. But Hocus, I, I would have said, also said Hocus Pocus if you didn't say it, and because the second one just came out. Yeah, exactly. have you seen it? Halloween Town was good. No, I have not seen it, but I will, I will for sure. Me too. Um, me and Sam are actually going to a haunted house tonight. We're very excited. <gasps> really? That has nothing to do with the movie, but it's Halloween. That's. Theme. Oh my gosh, that's kind of scary though. No. Yeah, I hope that I like pee my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you guys, I'm Sophia Huerta, and this is the Snacks Podcast with Just Women Sports. Thank you all so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Our show is produced by Just Women Sports. For more great sports content, go to JustWomenSports.com. Be sure to subscribe to the newsletter and follow along on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'm Lynn Williams. And I'm Sam Mewis. You've been listening to Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! Thanks for tuning into Snacks. While you may have wrapped up an episode with our guest today, be sure to head over to our friends at Flame Bearers, where you can hear top women Olympians and Paralympians reflect on their accomplishments, share their trials and triumphs, and discuss what life is like outside the games when the spotlight isn't on. Get ready to be inspired as season three just launched. Listen to Flame Bearers wherever you get your podcasts.